Hello everyone and welcome to the most difficult room in my house to shoot video. This is my DIY float tank. It, I've been building it for like three years on and off now, just slowly gathering parts for it. It's finally at a completed state or a state that I can shoot video of and explain all the, st all the systems and how they work. Uh, so let's get to it. We're in a storage space in my basement. It's like a five foot ceiling. Uh, it's built kind of under, under, under another section of my house, but uh, used for storage, as you can see, there's like stuff behind me camping and whatnot. And I thought this would be a perfect place for this tank because it's surrounded in concrete, so it's nice and quiet. It's relatively warm because it's, it's got main heating ducts running through it. And I don't use it for anything and it's, it's small height. So anyways, perfect for a tank. So I started building it down here and, um, and now it's done and I can show you the weirdness of this project. So I do apologize for the super close camera angles. I can literally touch both walls. It's like a four foot separation here and there's just no room to get the camera far enough away. I need a, I need a, like a fisheye lens for this place. I do not have, so we'll make do. Um, please, so the one thing everyone probably wants to see, let's get the rag out just to clean up any condensation, but so that's how you get into this creature. Hot. So you can't see anything because there's no lights on in there. So I'll get a flashlight so you can see. All right, so inside we have the bottom is a EDPM pool liner. Uh, it's one continuous piece, so I, I didn't want any seams because I, I didn't want 200 gallons of water leaking anywhere. And above the water line, we have basically a heavy duty poly. It's uh, called Panda Poly. It's, I've used it in the past, I quite like it. Um, all the seams are double sealed. They're sealed during assembly and then they were sealed after uh, everything was finished so that it should be fairly moisture tight. And that's, that's basically all it is, big warm body of water. Um, it's nothing too critical on the inside. I should put lights in here, but uh, I just haven't got around to it yet. Um, the environment is actually pretty aggressive because it's, it's a very high salinity salt water and it's very warm. And uh, obviously whatever I put in there, I want to be fairly safe because I will also be in there. So uh, I just haven't settled on lights yet, but they might be an upcoming process. Here you can see the output tube from the uh, water filtration, heating, blah, blah, blah system. Um, normally it just sits like this because um, it minimizes the splashing and just lets the water circulate nice and quietly. After it gets used, this little hose just pops off. And that lets the water agitate um, get any particulates off the surface. You don't have to use a surface skimmer so much. I just, I don't know, agitating water is good. Stagnant water is never good. Even if it's being filtered, it's always good to mix it up really well. So uh, I'll let that mix right now and we'll go over the rest of the project. So before we get too far into it, uh, this entire room was built out of uh, basically two by fours and OSB for the panning, paneling and then uh, insulation, a few layers of insulation. Um, so what we have is an OSB inside and then we have two by fours on edge. So we get a full four inches of uh, insulation room the uh, bump and stuff. The whole room was then covered with uh, like Roxwell insulation, sound deadening insulation, uh, and also thermal insulation. And then it was all covered with this Reflectex. I actually had like a 300 foot roll of this that I got for 30 bucks, like four feet by, th it was huge. It was like a giant tube like that. Anyways, made good use of it on this project. Whole room is lined with it. And uh, and yeah, and then that, that basically makes you a super insulated box. And like I said, the inside was all lined with waterproofing stuff. Um, the bottom was done in the same fashion. It's lifted off the floor a good, you know, four inches, insulated on the bottom with Reflectex first, then a bunch of four inches of that batting insulation I talked about, then another layer of OSB, then another layer of Reflectex to give it kind of a soft cushion, and then the EDPM pool liner. Uh, so it's, it's super insulated from the slab. That's what I was worried about. Uh, it gets pretty cold here, minus 30 in the winter, and uh, concrete underground, you know, it's it can get chilly. So anyways, I wanted to insulate it really well. It seems to be incredibly well insulated because uh, I thought this room would warm up, but it doesn't really seem to warm up at all and uh, uses very little power to keep this thing heated. So I'm super happy with that. These are the uh, air outlets. I have them plugged right now just to keep the humidity from, you know, going crazy in here. Uh, obviously when you jump in there, you pump, pull these out. There's ones on the lower side of the back of the unit and that lets a chimney effect cycle the air in here. Here's where it's gonna to start to get technical. So if you're not into technical details, uh, I don't know, what, why'd you start watching this? <laughs> uh, this is a mag drive pump. So it's, uh, I think they call it like sealless or something like that. Anyways, this section is sealed. The pump is driven magnetically so you don't have to worry about any you know, ingress of water getting into it. It's already been set up for uh, salt water so it can deal with the salinity. I think it's like 1.3 density. Um, 
for this the high salinity salt water so it's very thick it's hard to pump so you can't use a regular water pump you'll just burn them out uh, the water then moves through here th moves past a uh, thermocouple uh, i just turned it up on the lathe there's an aluminum body it sticks into the stream of water here the thermocouple then feeds the information that it's receiving uh, into the Arduino. And right now it's basically showing, if you can see, it's showing that the tank is currently idling, so the heater isn't on, um, and just pumping water past. And uh, as the temperature drops, it hits a certain point, turns back on, there's some hysteresis built in there. The dampening is from the 200 gallons of water, so I didn't have to put you know, a D factor. Um, there's no PID tuning in this, just because it's such a slow responding system. Um, and like I said, that hysteresis takes care of any wobbles at the turn off point and the turn on point. Uh, flicks on a SCR, which controls a thousand watt heating element. There's actually also, along with this temperature probe, there is one on the heater body, and I'll talk about that when we get there. It then pumps the water carrying on through. This is a 55 watt UV sterilizer. Uh, it's basically, it kills all the micro microorganisms and viruses that might be living in the water. Um, yeah, nothing much to say about that. Uh, this big piece here is a neon sign transformer, and this actually has an aquarium pump on it. And that is a DIY system for pumping ozone into this tank. It actually works incredibly well. I wasn't gonna spend like $200 on an ozone generator when I have a bunch of neon sign transformers. Um, so a little sketchy, but like I said, all the system is powered off when you're inside the tank. So um, it's not something that really concerns me, uh, like high voltage lines and water. It just, I have a rough idea what I'm doing. So don't poke around with this stuff if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, likewise, this has some exposed hot terminals. There's a cover that goes on this, but right now I'm working on it. So like I said, Use at your own risk. I know what I'm doing, so I'm fairly comfortable with it. And if I kill anyone, it's me. All right, and carrying on. Sorry for the bomb. Once again, this room is tiny. Uh, so what we have here, this is the mechanical filter assembly. There's no filters in it right now. It's a triple stack filter. It's used uh, in the aquarium worlds. Um, it has about, it filters down to about five micron, which I'd like to go down to one micron. I have some, if you look up here, way up here, there's some uh, big, filter bags I bought. These are one micron filter bags and I planned on making my own filter system for it, but it just, uh, water is very clever and it goes to wherever there's a hole. So I didn't want to play that game just yet. I wanted to get something functioning well. So anyways, five microns should be plenty uh, for what I need it for. Um, since it's only me floating in there, I'm not too concerned about it. Uh, this is the heater element. So this is similar to this module. It's a double stack not quite as big. It's got a 1000 watt titanium heating coil or heating rod in here. And that's controlled by the uh, SCR driven by the Arduino. And here is the second thermocouple that I was talking about. Uh, this thermocouple is just basically a redundant system. If this thing ever reads more than about four, I try to keep the water at 34.1 degrees Celsius. Uh, if this thing reads a temperature any higher than 40 degrees, that would basically indicate that the pump is shut down and that the heater is starting to heat the water just in here. And that was my fail safe. So if this ever reads 40 degrees, it shuts the whole system down. Um, maybe if the pump jammed or something like that, I didn't want it to start boiling water in this thing and you know mess with the system. So anyways, that's just a fail safe, shuts the entire system down if something kooky goes on. So this is the last part of the ozone generator. Uh, the neon sign transformer feeds power here. There's a borosilicate glass tube with basically a rod inside, glass, and then a wire wrapped around the outside. Um, the temperature, or the temperature, the electrical differential tries to jump the gap, but there's a glass in the way, so it's an insulator. Uh, you get a corona buildup, or, or uh, air comes into here from the aquarium pump, fills this chamber, and these, this is just a sight hole to see through. There's actually a piece of clear thing that goes on it. I just have it off right now. Um, fills, or this fills up with ozone. The air exchanges through here, pumps out the top, goes through a check valve, and then it gets spit into the elbow on the other side of this wall, which goes in stream with the water and then gets basically shoved into the water. The ozone half-life is a lot longer in water than it is in air, so I put it into the water so it lasts longer. Lasts longer. Um, ideally, this ozone generator would go before the UV because once you ozone goes through uh, UV light, you get a much stronger oxidizing chemical, but I just the way things worked here, I couldn't get it all to fit that way, so it'll work for now. Um, and it freshens the air in the tank. And then as long as you vent the tank before you use it, ozone's not so good to breathe in, uh, seems to be working well. So that's how the big commercial guys do it. They just do it on a much larger scale. This one is a little bit smaller. So those are the main details of this project. As you can maybe see in the very background over my shoulder, there's a little oxidizing symbol. I bought some 35% hydrogen peroxide. That's what I'm gonna use to basically clean the walls of the inside of the unit. Um, it's the only really strong oxidizer I can use that has a when it breaks down, it breaks it down into just oxygen and water, so it's a fairly uh, inert chemical. Um, 
some of the lower, and I mean, this is a low end tank, I would call that, but some people just strictly put it in the water to help deal with uh, um, breaking down organics. I don't think I'm gonna go down that road yet. I think I have enough systems in play to keep the water fairly clean. If that ever needs to be uh, addressed, I have a giant source now. I had to buy like 30 liters of it, so I have a lot of hydrogen peroxide now, but um, it should last me a decent amount of time. Anyways, uh, that's the basic overview of this system. Uh, right now, it is using about like, how can I work this out in the kilowatt hours? Um, pause for a minute while I do math. Okay. Um, so electricity is fairly inexpensive here. It's about seven cents per kilowatt hour. And this thing is using about maybe 40 cents in a 24 hour period. Uh, so figure out the math backwards from that. Um, that's just maintaining basically the temperature, running the pumps, the UV sterilizer, basically running everything. Um, so it's actually a lot cheaper than I thought it'd be. I thought it'd be about, a, I'd be running about a dollar a day uh, in power to keep us running, but uh, 20, 30 cents. I mean, it's winter right now too, so it's a lot cooler than it would normally be. So I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. Um, I was gonna actually insulate all the tubing and all the plumbing on this unit, but I don't, I don't know if I see the point. I think it's gonna be a minimal amount of gain. I might do it, but I like it right now open because it's very easy to spot if there's any leaks. And uh, so far, so good. So uh, we'll keep this running for another probably week or so. Uh, once I'm fully confident in everything, uh, then we'll put the filter system in and uh, siphon off some of the water because we have too much in there right now and start adding salt. We got a thousand pounds of salt. So um, that's the next project. Anyways, stay tuned. That should be next week. Thanks, bye.